All right, guys, we have to talk. Uh, last week, for Joint of the Week, I did this uh, mitered dovetail corner, is what we called it. And as many of you pointed out, uh, yes, that is a weak joint. So we're gonna rectify that this week. Uh, and we're gonna do a few things that I wanted to change, which was I wanted to do some inlay, I wanted to make these tails a little bit shorter, uh, and obviously I wanna put a spline. So we're gonna put an ebony spline in there, we're gonna inlay some purple heart, and then again use the lace wood uh, for the corner, which was also a big question from last week. And uh, I know guys, Sometimes we like to experiment on joint of the week. I made a weak one. Uh, in fact, my favorite comment was uh, that should be called the pretty little liar. So uh, let's make up for it and do one that's really strong. Now, unlike last week's joint of the week, uh, we want the inlay part of our tails to be bigger, much bigger than the maple because we're gonna have to cut them twice. So we're gonna go ahead and mark those out and make sure that they are bigger than our maple tails. Another thing that I really wanted to do too was make the tails shorter. So we're gonna, last week I did that at about five eighths and we need to obviously add in for our inlay which is gonna be about an eighth thick. So I'm gonna do three eighths. Good little tip here is all good rulers are gonna have indents where the measurements are. So you can quite literally put your marking gauge right in the indent and use it to set it. And I'll just click right in there. And again, these are just gonna be tails. We're only doing tails, no pins on this one. going to decide how thick our inlay. I think for me, I'm going to do a 16th of an inch. And so very simply, I'm just going to take a ruler here and put my marking knife at a 16th of an inch. Take a square. For cutting purposes, we're gonna take that line down. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut off both sides on the table saw. All right, so now that we've identified the size of our inlay, it's time to figure out where we're gonna cut. So what I like to do is I'll take my ruler and just measure in a 16th and put my marking knife right there. And I'll take a square and just go straight across. Now we need to mark out our depth. And what's great about doing inlay this way is because you cut a 16th up this way or whatever it is, you don't need to change your marking gauge. It's gonna be the exact same. So we're just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go across my tails here just so I don't have to sand too much later, especially because this is all really hard wood. <gasps> So now we're gonna lay out the tails for our corner piece. And when you're doing this, uh, you do not need to change your marking gauge. Your marking gauge is not gonna change on this step because it's still right there 
right at that same level. Uh, if you wanted to, you could adjust it by maybe like a hair's width, which would give you a little bit more breathing room in there. Uh, one of the things I learned on this step here was that I should have used a little bit more glue uh, when I was gluing the purple heart in. It was really hard and uh, to chisel and it kept breaking out, so I had to re-glue it, which is, you know, typical of inlaid dovetails. It's sometimes tough to to get the inlay to stick around, but uh, I really do wish I'd used more glue. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this out, same as before. We're gonna create a fence, push it up against, and then very carefully lay it out, um, making sure that when you look down in between, there's just, you see like, just the light starting to peek through, not even fully see through it, just that you can see that you're right there on the edge. So we're gonna start out by marking out both sides of this. And this is going to have a half tail of waste, so you do need to go around the edges. So let's get these marked out and cut and fit together. Okay, now that we have our inlay done, it's time to do our final milling. And what I mean by that is, when you do dovetails, especially four sets of them, you know, things can get a little twisted this way or this way. And so it's time to do a final milling. And if this was a box, you would want to do all pieces, make sure they're the same width and thickness. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just cut this down the middle, doesn't matter where, and then I'm going to go ahead and mill these separately because sometimes what can happen with dovetails is you know, each piece is canted out, you know, 0 0.05 degrees. And then you, if you try and joint this as one piece, you could end up losing a lot of materials because really you want to take off the minimal amount of material here. So we're going to cut it down the middle uh, and then we're going to joint and plane it again. You could use a hand plane very easily uh, or go through your machines. We might use the drum sander. Uh, and then we're going to cut our 45 degree angles. And when I cut my 45 degree angle, I'm gonna come right off the corner of this, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut in our splines. Um, and our splines we're gonna do at the router table, so I'll check back in with you there. We're gonna put in this really cool ebony spline. And this is what I got a lot of grief about last week was that I didn't reinforce this miter. So we're gonna not only reinforce it, but we're gonna do it in a super cool decorative way. So I have this ebony spline that is a quarter inch by a quarter inch. I've got a quarter inch upcut bit in my router table and it is set to, I believe about 0.3 high. Um, and what I did was I started at a quarter inch and I ran some test pieces here uh, until I got a perfect fit. And the way you know you'll have a perfect fit is that the ebony corners line up perfectly with the corner of what you've routed out there. So normally you would want to use a miter gauge for this, but I obviously don't on this wing of my table saw. Uh, so we're going to be using a sacrificial board to push these through so that we don't get any tear out in the back. And then we'll go ahead and glue this up and put some lacquer on it and see how freaking cool it looks.
Wow, guys, that came out amazing. I really like the look of the one we did last week, but you guys were right. I was lazy. I, did, I should have put some way to reinforce that miter. And boy, do I think we've rectified this. The inlay looks so cool. The ebony is such a cool design feature. When you sort of look down from the top, it really just adds a really cool decoration to it. Uh, there's lots of ways you could improve on that. You could make it proud and that could support your lid. So your lid had like a little shadow line, uh, or you could make it a lidless box, you know, some sort of coffee table decoration, that sort of thing. But it has a very Aztec look to it. Uh, I love the lacewood, the maple and the purple heart together. They really are just great contrast to each other. And again, this is what joint of the week is, is about. We learned something last week. We improved on it this week and we're making joinery that we're proud of. And this is, this is one that takes a lot of patience because putting tails on top of tails is really hard to mark out. It's really hard to make them fit. And it was really an exercise in precision. So guys, Thank you for watching. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks a lot, guys.